Hi everybody, welcome to this week's CBP Nonprofit Research Video Review. I'm Dr. Deed Harrison, President of Chiropractic Biophysics Nonprofit and President of Chiropractic Biophysics Seminars and Technique. This is our 33rd video review of one of our research papers. This week I've chosen a paper that was presented at a peer-reviewed chiropractic conference and presented as an abstract in a peer-reviewed journal, the Journal of Chiropractic Education in 2005. This is a case report. This is a very important case report and I'm going to preface it by saying I understand it is a single case, but when you follow me through this case, you will start to see the impact of what this case means to the individual and likely to people out there listening. More work needs to be done on this condition that this particular patient was suffering with. Without further ado, I'm going to read you the title of the paper, then we're going to go through the introduction and the case and the outcomes. This is on positive outcomes in a patient with Tourette syndrome and chronic tick disorder, a CBP case report by myself, Dr. Jason Haas, and this was in the Journal of Chiropractic Education. Now Tourette syndrome is a problem with the nervous system. Basically, nobody really knows the causation of this, but they say there's a problem with the way the circuits in the brain connect and interact with each other. There's also neurotransmitter dysfunction, serotonin, dopamine, etc. There's problems with the neurotransmitter. Basically, they've isolated it down to three regions in the brain, the frontal lobe, the basal ganglia, and then one other region. And, uh, the reality of it is, again, nobody really knows what the actual cause of Tourette syndrome is. It's really unknown. This is why it's called a syndrome. Now, Dr. Tourette, who it's named after, was a French uh, medical doctor in 1885. He was the first one to actually diagnose this and develop the syndrome, hence its name Tourette syndrome. Now, people with Tourette will have nervous system type of involuntary movements. We can have simple movements like a blinking or a twitching of the eye over and over again or a facial tick that's called a simple motor movement or we can have complex motor movement like flailing of the arm or movement of the head over and over again and the idea is it's repetitive and the person cannot control it they don't realize it's well, they know it's happening, but they're not asking it to do it. It's involuntary. There's also phonic or sound ticks. Simple sound ticks can be the sniffing, grunting, groaning, wheezing, like, or you'll hear that in people. At first, you think, you know, something's wrong with the person, but you don't realize, hey, they actually have an involuntary movement disorder and Tourette's type syndrome. It's not their, pro it's not their fault. So you have to look at these people and say, hey, let's treat them like a regular person. Don't sit there and stare at them. I've worked with many, many patients with Tourette's, and I can tell you they appreciate being treated as an actual human being. That's what we always have to remember. Okay, now, we can also have complex phonic tics. Now, complex phonic ticks would be vocalization of words, right? Not a simple sound, but now a word or a phrase. Oftentimes, they're the swear words or the dirty words. If you remember the movie in the, the uh, 1990s and early 2000s, Deuce Bigelow, when he took out the woman that had Tourette syndrome, he took her to the ball game. Qu kind of a funny movie, right? That's the complex Tourette's, the vocalization of the swear words. Now, personally, I've only had one of those cases with complex Tourette's in my career. And what you have to do is you just have to let everybody in the office know that this is you know, going to happen. And it can be quite entertaining in an open floor environment. And you gotta make it entertaining for the person. The person, again, they cannot control it. They know what's going on, but they can't stop it. So just work with them, right? Throw out a few swear words yourself, like Deuce Bigelow did. I mean, I'm more than happy to do that. I won't do it on video, but get the idea. Okay, so the reality of it is Tourette's syndrome, starts in early childhood. However, it may not be formally diagnosed until the condition progresses, until it advances and it really becomes more noticeable. For example, when we're young, you might just see a little blinking or you might see just a little facial twitch and, and the medical doctor or a doctor might go, oh well, possible Tourette's. And then as you age, as you get into your teenage years, now it becomes more severe. 
now the signs and symptoms really progress, right? So Tourette's syndrome doesn't affect a certain ethnicity. It seems to affect everybody across the board. Okay, males though are more commonly affected than females, three to four times more likely. In the United States, this is a big number. It is estimated that there are 200,000 people with a severe form of Tourette's. Now, the severe form, you got to realize 200,000 people have that. Now, there's more than severe. There's mild and moderate. It's estimated that one to two people out of a hundred can have a mild to moderate form of Tourette's. So this is a pretty significant condition that we're seeing affecting the human population. And keep in mind, it's of an unknown etiology. It's simply diagnosed as a nervous system disorder, parts of the brain, parts of the brain stem, etc. Right? So, uh, when we look at this, help for these types of cases, especially kids, is very, very important. It's also very rare that somebody actually knows what to do for these kids. Now, I'm not here advocating this as a cure. I'm here to advocate this as an attempted intervention. Nothing can, can help, or excuse me, nothing can be wrong with trying to do something new. If it helps, now you've changed somebody's life forever, okay? So keep this in mind. Instead of saying, hey, there's no hope, let's consider this case and go, wow, maybe other cases with Tourette's syndrome need to see a chiropractor. So this particular case, I met him as a 19-year-old male. He came down to stay in my office when I practiced in Elko, Nevada. He was from Canada. I met him through a mutual colleague. So he was referred down, he stayed at my practice for three months. He was originally diagnosed when he was nine years of age, okay? It was an early diagnosis, okay? When he reached the age of 14, it became so obvious that he had Tourette's that that's when he was formally diagnosed at the age of 14 by a primary care provider, a medical doctor. Now, at that time, he was under chiropractic care. Initially, traditional chiropractic adjusting of the joints, what we call spinal manipulation, seemed to help the, the Tourette's, the tics. However, it didn't totally solve the problem. They quieted it down. However, it was only transient in its help. He continued to see the chiropractor up in Canada, but it stopped working, okay? His Tourette's progressively got worse and worse and worse, and then, over the last 3.5 years, from, from about the age of 16 years up to 19 years, he had to go on what's called haloperidol. Now, haloperidol is an antipsychotic. Haloperidol will also help in voluntary movements as well. It helps with the involuntary muscle and phonic types threats. It doesn't cure it, it inhibits it, the excitability of the motor neuron pool. So it depresses your excitability. What it also does when it does that, it can depress sexual function. Now, sometimes people out there, they don't listen to the fact that what I'm trying to tell you about this case, and I'm not naming names, I am a doctor, I am a chiropractic physician. I'm here to tell you, I wanna know about these types of things with my patients. I wanna connect with them. If you're embarrassed listening to this, too bad. If a 19 year old male has sexual dysfunction where he cannot get an erection, that's a major, major problem for this human being, major. When we're in our adolescence, our testosterone should be peaking and we should have no problem with sexual erection. Okay, now I'm not advocating sexual activity in young adults, I'm saying it's supposed to work. Now, he's been on this medication, it's not working. Okay, the reality of this, haloperidol depresses your sexual excitability. Now imagine this, if you're 19 years of age as a male, or if you're a man of any age and you can't have an erection. This is a big problem. Okay, now, the kid's got Tourette's, he grunts, he groans, he wheezes, we'll talk about this. He's likely not going to even ask a young lady that's his age, 18, 19, out on a date. He's probably embarrassed by this. He's likely not gonna wanna go to college. These are the things that are happening in this person. 
When you stop and think about the life impact of this, this is dramatically affecting his life. Now, some people can overcome those hurdles without help. Other people need help. Okay, we want this young man to be able to go, you know what, hey, I got Tourette's, fine, so be it. I'm gonna go to college, I'm gonna you know, do whatever I wanna do, but at this point in the game, he's not real thrilled with what's happening to him and he's having some psychosocial issues, okay? So, he saw a chiropractor for a while, it didn't help, okay? It only helped temporarily and then the progression of the condition slowly worsened over time, then he's on haloperidol. Now, you think the haloperidol is a walk, walk in the park. It helps, but this drug is not a walk in the park. Look it up on WebMD, here's what you're gonna find out, okay? It's used to inhibit or assist movements and outbursts in, in Tourette's. However, it also causes dizziness, drowsiness, difficulty urinating, sleep disturbances, headaches, anxieties, okay? Now it says down here if these conditions of, you know, persist or worsen, notify your doctor or pharmacist, but the reality of it is, look at this, it can also worsen the Tourette's. It can cause muscle spasm, stiffness, shakings and tremors, restlessness, and then a mask facial-like expression, which is a very serious condition. You gotta realize drugs are not good for you, okay? I'm just here to say it out loud. I'm not here to prescribe or tell you not to take it. What I'm here to say is, when you get prescribed a medication, the doctor is saying to you, the, the condition that you have is likely worse than these potential side effects. That's the reality. Don't go around thinking that this drug doesn't have a side effect. You can look it up on WebMD. That's where I got it from. So don't say that I'm practicing medicine without a license. I'm a chiropractor. I'm just reading you from WebMD. This is exactly where it came from. Okay, so the kid's on haloperidol. He's actually having symptoms from haloperidol, by the way. So some of these things we have to report back to the MD and we have to say some of these might actually be due to him taking the haloperidol, like the sexual dysfunction, erectile dysfunction, the tremors that he ha is having that were not part of the original Tourette's, these types of things. So chiropractors, we need to be aware of this, that way we can co-manage the case with their local MD because we actually see the patient more often. Now this child stayed with me, the teenager stayed with me for three months, so I got to see him every day for three months, every day. So I got to know and see what was happening. So it's my job to communicate these things to the medical provider and say, hey, maybe you need to really check the medication and maybe see if it's potentially causing these things, so let's work together, correct? That's a chiropractor's role, by the way. Now, we take an x-ray. This is my primary role. In addition to working with the medical doctor on, hey, there's potentially things that might be caused by the medication. Maybe you need to relook at this and you know, maybe you need to consider changing the medication dose or the type, whatever, because I'm spotting these things. My job, primary job, is to take a look at this patient's spine, okay? So I look at his spine, I x-ray his neck, and we x-ray the rest of his body, it's okay, Here's the primary problem. His neck curve from the side is terrible. It's terrible, okay? His neck is reversed, it's going the wrong way. Right here at four, five, and five, six, it's what we call a kyphotic cervical curve. The head is translated forward, shifted forward by almost two inches, 46 millimeters. The top of the neck should be tilted backwards by about 23 to 29 degrees. His is zero. His top vertebra is flat. It's a reverse cervical curve, the head's forward, that's not normal. Now he's been like this for a long time. If you look at vertebra number three and number four, they have an unusual shape to them. They have a wedge shape to them. He grew with this type of kyphotic neck. So I know it's been there a long time. So vertebra three and four, because of their abnormal wedge shape, look at it compared to five and even six and seven, you'll see there's a difference in the shape of the vertebra. Due to what's called Huter Volkmann's law, when you have a reverse neck curve, you put too much pressure on the front half of the vertebra and it doesn't grow right. And that's what's happening here. By the way, that's not an opinion, it's called a law. Huter Volkmann's law. I get, you know, crazy comments from people. They go, oh, there's no proof for that. I'm like, is there proof for gravity? Drop your keys, see what happens every time they fall. I promise you, it's Huter Volkmann's law. Every time you grow, with a kyphotic neck, you will get wedge-shaped vertebra. I'm just telling you, it's a fact. Look it up. Now back to this. 
once in a while I get a little bit excited and I have to do that occasionally, it just comes out of me, okay? So here's our case. Our 19 year old male with a reverse neck curve. By the way, this is after traditional chiropractic for several years. If you think just adjusting the neck is gonna correct the alignment, you're wrong. You are wrong, it doesn't work that way. Now once in a great while, it will, you'll get lucky. I say even a blind squirrel can find a nut because they can smell, right? However, you wouldn't bet on it. You wouldn't take a hundred people and adjust their neck and expect the curve to come back. You have to do specialized things. So this is after chiropractic care. This is after three years of medication. Neither one of them has changed his neck curve. So you go, oh, well chiropractic didn't work for me. Well, no. The right type of chiropractic wasn't done. That's why it didn't work. That's our perspective. We do something different, okay? We do want to adjust the joints, but we want to correct this neck. And you'll see how we do that. Now he's got simple motor tics that include mouth movements, facial grimaces, head movements, shoulder shrugging, abdominal tensing when you look at his uh, stomach with the shirt off, leg and foot movements. And by the way, we used what's called the Yale Global Tick Severity Scale. This questionnaire takes 30 to 45 minutes to administer just this questionnaire. We have to put the patient in a pair of shorts and we have to watch their entire body and we track how many ticks per minute that they have in each region. We also notice complex motor ticks. What are complex motor ticks? Well, shoulder gestures, riding ticks, dystonic postures, compulsive behaviors. Also, simple phonic ticks sniffling, quick exhaling noises, but there were no vocalized word, no complex phonic tics, okay? The tics were present almost always. The impairment was rated as a 40% on the Yale Global Tic Severity Scale. This was the initial evaluation. Now, daily medication of haloperidol was taken to control the motor and the phonic tics, and he'd been on it for 3.5 years. He still had the tics, when he was taking the haloperidol, but it suppressed him a little bit. Now here's the reality of it. What do I think is going on? And this is think, this is my hypothesis. I don't know, but this is the way a chiropractor like me would think. If you lose your neck curve, you're taking your spinal cord picture on the left here, which shows a slackening of the spinal cord, slackening of the nerve roots in the neck. So this is the spinal cord running down your spine in the neck. This is the arteries and veins. This is called the posterior spinal artery and venous complex. These little guys are the, the what we call nerve root or radicular arteries and veins. Now this spinal cord is relaxed. The nerve root has slack in it. You can see it's wavy, it's undulated. It's like a bungee cord that's not being stretched. Good. This is what happens when you have a good neck curve. When you take your neck curve out, you get a reverse curve like our kid with Tourette's. Look what happened to your spinal cord. It's under tension. It's being pulled taut, okay? You can see the tightness in it. You can see the tightness in, in the nerve roots here. Again, this is not a belief. This is biomechanics of the central nervous system. When you lose your neck curve, it puts tension on your spinal cord. If you have a kyphotic neck, this is what it's doing. It impairs the, the artery flow and the venous return. It impairs what's called oxidative phosphorylation in the mitochondria of the neuron. In other words, it, it makes it very challenging for the neuron to produce what's called ATP. Now, ATP is used for energy in the cell, cell biosynthesis, neurotransmitter metabolism, all these things. So what do I think is going on in this child? Well, I think his spinal cord's under so much tension his nervous system's not working right. It's not talking correctly to the brain. So not enough traffic through the spinal cord and not enough input to the brain through what's called joint mechanoreception, movement, etc. Because the spinal cord is under stress and strain, it increases the fluid pressure in there, which impairs oxidative phosphorylation in the neuron. It makes it harder for the nerve to function. In physiology, when you stretch a nerve, its ability to carry an action potential doesn't work quite right. The speed of transmission, its speed, 
called its latency. It is not as fast when you put tension on it. And its amplitude of the signal, the strength of the signal is not as big or as large when you put tension on it. You have an impaired ability of this nervous system to function and fire. This is what I would believe is going on. Can I prove that this is the cause of, of his Tourette's are related? No, I can't. I'm just telling you a potential mechanism that's related here. This is my working hypothesis. So what do I want to do? I want to take his spinal cord from here and get it to here. How do I do that? I've got to correct his neck curve. Okay. By the way, this, is come, uh, this picture comes from Alf Bregg's 1978 textbook, Adverse Mechanical Tension in the Central Nervous System. This is a more recent publication. This comes from the Journal, Journal of Neurosurgery Spine, 2013. When you lose your neck curve, we know it affects your nervous system, okay? This picture comes from Bill Ruck's book. Bill Ruck is a chiropractor with an uh, anatomy degree, a master's degree. He was one of my instructors at Life Chiropractic College West, uh, Dr. Bill Ruck. This is from his uh, originally 1997 textbook, CRC Press, called The Atlas of Vertebral Subluxations of the Spine and Pelvis. He then republished this book, I believe, in 2014. So 1997 and 2014, if my memory serves correctly. This is what's happening. You lose your neck curve, it's putting longitudinal tension on your spinal cord in your brainstem area. You can also have direct contact with discs or bone spurs. So if you have a mild disc herniation, mild disc bulge, it's going to put direct pressure on your spinal cord and nervous system. In a patient that's genetically susceptible to Tourette's or environmentally susceptible to Tourette's, this might enhance or accelerate the problem. Okay, it's not that this will cause it in everybody, but in a person that's genetically or environmentally susceptible, maybe this is one of the mechanisms. And you might go, oh, well, you're making stuff up. Well, everybody makes stuff up with Tourette's. Nobody knows what in the hell's going on, right? So forgive me for making stuff up, but let's watch it, you know, watch what happens with this case. You look at this, and by the way, the comments I make on the video, I entertain myself, I get some emails, and I get some comments directed to me about these things. And so when I make a comment like this, it's based on a past uh, video that I did, and somebody didn't like when I make something up. So I'm telling you I'm making something up, but it seems reasonable to me, right? Here's the neck curve. This is a bad shape in the spine. We want to correct that with chiropractic biophysics. What do we do? We put the person in the mirror image. What's the mirror image? The opposite position. So we bring the head backwards, we extend or tilt the head back, and then I'm gonna put pressure directly at the apex of that reverse curve. So my hands are gonna go right here at C4, C5. We're gonna call, call this a drop table adjustment for the cervical curve. Now it's not where we're cracking the joints. We're not, we are physically changing the shape of the spine by putting your posture in its exact opposite position and then applying a thrust directed to the apex of the curve to change that cervical curve. We do this every visit one to three times, okay? Here's an instrument technique. If you don't like the by hand technique with the, what's called the drop table, then we put you in the, in the same position and we use the instrument, we place that instrument at C5 or C6 or C4 and we apply mechanical thrust with an instrument in a very controlled manner. Okay, this is called a mirror image instrument adjustment. We can do this standing. Okay, standing what we're doing is we're taking the instrument and we're tapping the upper cervical region that has a rich population of joint mechanoreceptors and muscle spindles in the upper cervical uh, muscles, like the rectus capitis, uh, posterior minor and major muscles. Uh, these muscles have high populations of muscle spindles per gram. Muscle spindles help control uh, body alignment, body posture by giving feedback to the nervous system on stretch and position, okay? Well, stretch in the muscle and then position in the joint. Also what was done, mirror image exercise. The head's forward and he's got a reverse neck curve. So what we're going to do is ask him to exercise it in the opposite position against resistance with a head harness and a bungee cord 
Usually we start with real light resistance, then we progress up to where it's a little heavier. We're gonna ask him to do 50 to 100 repetitions. Gonna contract the head backwards, hold for five seconds, then release forward. We're gonna repeat that 50 to 100 times. Also, here's a head weight. This is not the male, obviously. These are models, okay? This is uh, my younger sister, and this is a, a model uh, a doctor that uh, we know that volunteered for this, by the way. So this is a head weight on. When you put the head weight on in younger populations, it causes what's called a retraction and a slight extension, so it corrects the posture. Since our case is younger, he's going to respond well to that. However, these two exercises do not change the curve. They change the posture. So what do we need to change the curve? Well, we need what's called a fulcrum. So I need to load the apex of his curve, which is C4 to C6, need to load it forward and then have him tip his head backwards and translate or shift his head backwards. This is what we call the prolordotic exerciser. Okay, so different patients get different things. This patient, he's going to get this. We're gonna do the mid-neck and we're gonna do this 50 to 100 repetitions, okay? You'll notice that there's a slight angle upwards because we're trying to pull through the plane of the discs while he's doing this. So we have adjustments and we have exercise every day that he comes in. Also, what we're going to do is traction. In this case, we chose extension, compression, two-way traction. Now, this is not him. I will show you his setup coming up. This is from a study that we did in 2003. If you look at a previous video that we did earlier in this series, I don't know exactly what number it was, but we went through this clinical control trial where we showed that this traction is very effective at changing the cervical curve. We showed almost an 18 degree improvement in the cervical curvature from C2 to C7 after 37 or 38 visits of this type of traction. So this is the type of traction that he was doing. Okay, so here's his neck. This is the angle of pull. We're trying to match that exerciser that we're uh, pulling at an angle upwards of about 10 to 15 degrees. So from horizontal, I have about a 10 to 15 degree increase in my angle of pull. That way I can pull through the C4 to C6 disc joints or disc plane. Okay, so we're gonna try to pull right through this area in his cervical spine. He's gonna start with three minutes of traction and then over consecutive visits, he's gonna work his way up to where he's going to do 15 to 20 minutes of sustained traction position, okay? We do this over time. People are, it's really funny. Patients out there, they go, well, can't you just fix my neck in one visit? And you go, really, one visit? You've been like this for 10 years and you think we're just gonna adjust it magically back into place. Do you really think your spine works that way? Let's think about this. How long do you have to wear braces? When you go to a dentist, how long do you have to wear braces? What do you guys think? Two to five years and then for the rest of your life now they know you have to have a retainer in there. So let me ask you a question. Do you think your teeth are more complicated than your spine? Really? You think your teeth are more complicated than your spine. So if a dentist, it takes them two to five years to change your teeth, do you think a chiropractor can change your spine in one visit? I mean, come on, I get the craziest questions out there. They're like, well, my last chiropractor adjusted me once and I was perfect, put it right back in place. And I'm like, that's not what happened. It's not, it's not what happened. You felt better, but that's not what happened that your neck went back in place. It's not what, it hap what happened. I'm just telling you the reality of it. You can love me or hate me, but I'm telling you the truth. Okay, so we're gonna do this consecutive days over and over and over again. You've gotta stretch the tissue back into place. You've gotta work the alignment back into place. Okay, we're also going to use the deneral traction. The deneral traction is a home unit. We're gonna take the peak of the deneral, we're gonna to have to put it in the lower cervical spine. This one is a little too high. We're gonna to have to go a little lower for him, right? And always, you can see we chose a model, not the actual patient to protect his identity, okay? So this is the, the uh, patient. We wanna place the peak of the deneral at five and six to so a little lower. He's gonna do this at home. He's gonna start with one to three minutes and he's gonna progress up to 20 minutes every day that he's at home. This is his home care. Deneral at home, then we're gonna do the other procedures in the office, okay? I had him for three months. He was a visitor international. 
three months, we saw him 81 sessions, 81 sessions in three months. This is his re-examination at the end of three months. Now I have other re-examinations, but for brevity, I'm not gonna go through all those. Here's his initial, we talked about the Yale Global Tick Severity Scale. He had a 40% impairment. Three months later, you'll notice the difference. These are what he first came in with with the simple motor ticks. This is what he still has. You'll notice many things are better. He doesn't have the head movements anymore. He doesn't have the facial grimaces anymore. He doesn't have the mouth movements anymore. Look at the complex motor ticks. He still has these, but he doesn't have the dystonic posture, okay? Even the ones he has though are better, we'll see. Simple phonic ticks. Still has the sniffing and quick exhaling noises, okay? And again, no complex. And then look, frequent, the ticks are present frequently and the impairment was rated a 10 out of 50. That is a 50% improvement on the Yale Global Tick Severity Scale. Here's the deal. From the age of 14 to 19, he progressively worsened. He progressively worsened. His medication dose had to go up and up and up. In three months with me, he progressively got better by 50% and he self, self-medicated dose cut in half. So he talked to his parents and he talked to his MD and he made the decision, he's 19, 19 years of age. He made the decision to cut his dose of haloperidol down by 50%. And in addition to doing that, he's still 50% better than when he first started. So I'm here to tell you that corrective chiropractic did something for his condition. This was at the three months. I'm gonna wow you in just a second. 81 treatments three months. This is the pre, this is the post, so A to B, and then C is two years later. So we had him continue to do this at home over two years. Sorry, I thought I had one more slide. We had him continue to do this at home over two years. He built a traction unit that he used under supervision of a family member, and he also continued to see a chiropractor up there to help him with some other things. This is A to B is 81 sessions. We changed it quite a bit, but you gotta realize it takes more work in these cases because they have this movement going on, right? Then, two years later, look at the improvement of his neck curve. His Tourette's went into remission. No longer has it. He's done with it. It's gone. It's all gone. Two years later, now it's been 10 years. Guess what? Still Tourette's free 10 years later. I keep in touch with him through a family friend and a family member of his, so I know this. He is still better. He is still better. I'm here to tell you he got his life back by getting his neck curve back. Changed his whole sense of reality. Instead of being on medication for the rest of his life that creates erectile dysfunction, he now gets his life back. He now goes to college, he graduates, he now you know, meets a young woman, he gets married. All these things, you get the idea. What did we do with this child? You know, I call him a child, he's 19. We turned his life around by correcting the cervical spine. Will that help every case of Tourette's? Probably not. Will it help several of them out there? Yes, probably. You don't know until you try it. This is the crazy thing. I tried chiropractic. No, you didn't. If you didn't do this, you didn't try corrective chiropractic, I'm here to tell you. It's not one session. 81 treatments it took, but then it also took longer than that. He had to work at it for a continued t length of time, one to two years later, right? You don't go to the gym one time, you go, oh, I'm done, look at me, right? Yep, got the body of my dreams. One visit, I'm done, totally done, right? You're right, you're 50 pounds overweight. Oh, I dieted today, I'm done, I dropped 50 pounds, right? Craziness, craziness. It's the same thing with your spine. You don't go to a chiropractor and go, oh, yep, one, one adjustment, my neck curve's better, you know, I'm cured, right? Or, oh, I went to the you know, chiropractor for a week, it didn't help me. Come on, let's use some logic and common sense. If your spine looks like this, this bad, you're gonna have to work at it.
It takes time. You gotta have patience. You gotta be consistent. You gotta put in the work. You gotta have somebody to motivate you. Now I know I might be getting a little crazy with you guys today, but somebody needs to. Somebody needs to give you a wake up call out there. If you're a chiropractor, you've gotta be willing to say these things to your patients because their perspective is you adjust them once and boom, their spine's normal again. No, it's not. It's not. It doesn't work that way. It takes time to change things in your body. No different than strength gains, weight loss, or dental work. It takes time. Your spine is a complicated system, right? This Tourette's case, to me, it's one of the most amazing cases that I've ever worked with. I've worked with three or four different Tourette's cases in my career, and I'm not lying, every one of them has shown positive benefits. Will I eventually run into one that I can't help? Yep, you're, you're, you're betting on, or I'll bet on it. Absolutely, but I haven't found that one yet. I've only worked on three or four. I'd love to work on more, but if you're out there and you have Tourette's, give this a shot. Look up a CBP trained chiropractor in your area. Listen to the message at the end of this presentation and go to a CBP trained chiropractor. You owe it to yourself. It's not about the doctor, it's about you. Wouldn't you want to do something that potentially can totally change your life and give you your life back from Tourette's, okay? This is a very debilitating condition for many of the people out there, especially with severe Tourette's. There is some hope. There are other things you can try. You don't just have to be allocated and relocated to taking drugs for the rest of your life. You may still have to take them, but if you get corrective chiropractic care and your condition improves, you go back to your MD and you and your MD can go, hey, maybe you don't need this medication anymore. That's my message. That's the case for the day. Hopefully you enjoyed this or for the week. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Look forward to talking to you next time. Thank you for your time and attention. If you like this information, if you're a patient, you need to go to a chiropractic biophysics trained chiropractor. You can find us all over the United States, Canada, and international locations. Go to www.cbppatient.com and look up CBP providers in your area. It's an easy to use, uh, user-friendly site. Search for, at first, a general or advanced trained CBP chiropractor. If you can't find one of those, then find somebody that's at least on the directory and has taken our courses and that does the work. Okay, so let's go to a CBP trained chiropractor, www.cbppatient.com. If you're a chiropractor and you're interested in this, either learning more about it or maybe it's brand new to you and this you know, particular video research project intrigues you, come to our website for doctors. Go to idealspine.com. We've got a lot of things there for you. We've got training, we've got conferences, we've got products. Love to have you on board and become one of the CBP doctor family providers, right? We need your help. There's patients out there that need you, and if you don't get trained in this work, then you're not going to be able to provide them the type of service that we think you should be providing them from a corrective care point of view. Also, lastly, anybody out there? We also need your help to continue to do research investigations like this, right? These are time and dollar consuming projects. If you will, go to our web uh, site directly and sponsor and support Chiropractic Biophysics Nonprofit. Make a donation of any amount to us. Also, you can do it indirectly on Amazon Smile. Just select Chiropractic Biophysics as your nonprofit foundation. And when you purchase through Amazon Smile and Amazon, CBP Nonprofit will get a half a percent of all your purchases, which is a big deal. It adds up.